Hi, I'm the long-haired version of Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. We're always trying to make our workbench more user-friendly. Got a new idea. It's for our workbench shelf. Place to keep your shooting board nice and handy. I'm gonna walk you through this. Give it, make it a nice little dovetail exercise. Stay with me. If you've watched any of my videos, you realize I use my shooting board multiple times during every build, multiple times a day. And uh, I just thought about it the other day. I said, I'm really getting tired of reaching down there to pick it up. And I'm always careful to put it in so I don't beat things up. And I'm thinking I need some kind of a shelf so that it's literally just put underneath when I'm not using it. And I don't have to walk anywhere to get it. So on our Cosmin workbench, we want to make that even more convenient. And the idea is to have a shelf right underneath here. Of course, if you're left-handed, you're going to put it underneath there. But that you can slip that underneath and literally lift it up and put it in place when you want it. So, also want to make uh, give you some kind of a little practice piece as well. Now, lots of dovetails on this, but dovetails in plywood. That's a new twist. So, let me show you what we're going to make it out of. Be right with you. You're going to, you need this shelf to hold your shooting board. So it's going to go in like this. It's open in the back. So it's got to be at least as wide as your shooting board. But then what I'm going to end up doing is having a piece that's actually going to be underneath here. Then there's going to be a piece that's up here that holds it to the underside of the bench. So you need enough wiggle room. Remember, this is going to go up against this trestle. So you need enough room to sit and slide it in there. You don't want to be too tight. So. This is going to be the width of your shooting board plus the thickness of one piece and another eighth of an inch just to uh, make it easier to slide it in. Now, this is going to be attached here, but the narrowest part are the two uh, stretchers up above. So when this piece comes up here, you don't want it being flush like this because there's a radius on that trestle and out of that uh, stretcher and that looks terrible it looks like a gap so you want to move it in here so that you're at least where the radius ends but then I always like to go a little bit more so that there's no room for error so we're going to stop like that so I've measured from side to side come inside of the, to the radiuses and a little bit less than that and I come up with I think it's 14 yeah, 14 inches so we're going to be 14 inches wide, and what we're going to do, simply because we're using Baltic birch, and I don't know if I'd mentioned this or not, but the nice thing about Baltic birch plywood is they use the same material in the encore as they do on the exterior. Most plywoods, you get the fancy wood on the outside and you get a weed on the inside, which is terrible for just about everything. This stuff is nice enough that you can plane or sand that, and it actually looks nice and finished. You'll notice that's all you see on the side of the uh, trestles. So the downside is that it's thin, and if you're trying to screw into it like that, it doesn't have great holding power. But you can go through the face, and it has lots of holding power. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this piece here, then we're going to have this upright, and that's going to create the space, and then we're going to put another piece on here. We'll cut it down, make it smaller, smaller afterwards but it's difficult to try to dovetail a piece that's too narrow so we'll leave it this width and then cut it down after we've joined it but this is going to be joined to that and this one is going to be joined to the underside of this piece so that we can then screw into here into the side of the trestle to hold it in place again you don't want to come through the trestle with a three inch screw and go into the edge of this relatively thin plywood it just doesn't have the holding power and it has a tendency to split so Baltic birch is the choice, and it's what we've used on the base. So recap, I've got four pieces. And just so that you know the dimensions I'm working with, I'm going to give you the grain length direction first. These are all three inches. So one, two, three pieces that are three inches by 14. And this section is 12 and 5 eighths, which again takes into account the width of the shooting board plus the thickness of that side piece, because it's a dovetail, so it's going to come in like that, plus a little bit of wiggle room to slide that in. 
Uh, of course, the option here is you can simply screw these joints together. Um, I wouldn't just glue them. You can nail them and glue and nail them. And do whatever you want, but if you want a good little exercise with dovetails, and it is your workbench, and you are a hand tool woodworker. So what I'm, the way I'm going to proceed with this is I'm going to forego any of the normal dovetail stuff, and I'm just going to film what might be a little bit different when it comes to uh, dovetailing in, in plywood. Again, dealing with plywood. So the first thing I'm going to do before I even start the layout is just get, make those edges a little bit more, uh, a little friendlier. There's always a little bit of tear out on there coming off the table saw. So I'm going to go in. I'm using my Sean Shim. If you want to find out about that, we'll leave a link below. Relatively new product, but makes shooting so much easier. Just need to get that clean enough to make marks easier to see. Plywood's a little bit bent. It'll straighten out when we actually assemble. But when I'm using the shooting board, I've got to make sure I push down on it. So that it leaves this edge square. If you allowed it to stick up like that and you planed that, it would not be square to the bottom. Pushing that down maintains that. Well, this is the shelf. It's going to bear all the weight. On this side going up against the trestle, that's going to sit like that. So it does not matter where the tails and pins are. But I'm going to put the tails there just because the tails tend to be a little bit bigger, which means there's going to be more of this material if I have tails on this side and the weight is going to be pressing down. That means this is going to be pins. This one, this one is going to be hanging from this. Remember, we're going to make it like that. We're going to screw this piece to the underside, so the pressure, gravity is going to be pulling down this way. So I'm going to put tails, I'm going to turn that this way. I'm going to put tails here to resist gravitational pull which means this one is going to have pins. And then this one, gravity is going to be pulling this down, so I'm going to put tails on this one, which is tails on double both sides of this piece, and this one is going to have pins. Hopefully you understand all that. Now I'll go ahead and lay that out, and I'll stop and mention just something about the layout in terms of how I would do it a little bit different with plywood versus solid wood. I'm going to use a 25 thou offset. What that means is when I drag my sawtooth blade through the kerf to leave a mark where to start the saw on the second piece, I need to have it moved over. In other words, if you look at it like this, what we're going to cut down here is going to fill this spot. This piece is going to be removed. So we have to have something down here that will go from here right to the side of this tail. So we have to allow for the saw kerf. Normally I use 24 thou, which happens to be my saw kerf. However, I want them to be a little bit tighter, so I'm going to move it over 25 thou. So using the Sean Shim, I'm going to use this one. And the 25 thou means it's going to be one thou bigger than it would otherwise, which should just make it that just nice and snug. Now what that does to these inside pins is make them two thou bigger because you're going to go a thou on either side. Now last thing I want to show you here is when you drag this through, I actually have a piece of MDF I'm going to put on here to protect my bench because it tends to fall down. When you drag that through, it's real easy to accidentally tear off the veneer on the plywood. So I just do easy passes, easier than normal. Enough to leave a mark, but not so much as to leave damage on that front edge. All right, here's another uh, tip. I'm using a crosscut saw, whereas a dovetail saw is a, a rip tooth. But I find that the crosscut saw, I mean, half of what you're doing is crosscutting if you think about where the grain runs. But what I'm liking about it is it's not tearing out nearly as bad on the back side, which tends to happen with the rip saw on this application. Now on this stuff, I tried to get as close as possible to that baseline with the fret saw. The tape makes it a lot easier to see, but you chisel work on this is just a little bit different than solid wood, so for that reason I try to minimize it by 
removing 98% with the fret saw. All right, when I chiseled this, I always start on the face side on these ones in particular. And what you'll find a little bit different is when you're chopping through, when you hit a piece of grain running this way, the chisel just blasts through it. So that's a little bit different. So I'm going to set that, and I'm using a three-quarter inch chisel with a really acute bevel on there. It's probably somewhere around 17 degrees. Now, this is hardwood, and I'm having to stop and sharpen a little more frequently than otherwise, but I like the way it cuts nice and clean. Don't have to go terribly deep on that first chop, just so that you can establish a nice square base right in here so when that joint closes you've got the material that you need to prevent any gap showing. Hey if you like this video we have more. Our monthly newsletter has subscriber only content, discounts monthly on tools and anything we bring out that's new subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. So this is one of those projects if you plan to do it that you've got to really label carefully and the reason is typically you have dovetail on either end of the same piece but in this case because of where the stress is we got dovetails on this end we got pins on this end this and we have dovetails on both sides but I'm going to show you why that's a little bit different so this is going to go together like this you also want to make sure you label where the upside is this has to go together like this this one is going to go together make sure I get this right Somewhere on here, there's an O. I should have put my glasses back on. There it is. So this one is going to go together like this. This one, line up the letter, is going to go together like this. The other, the other minor challenge is you've got to come in and chamfer your tails before you put them together. But you're chamfering the bottom side of this one. You're chamfering this side of this one, but this side of this one. And you just, if you don't make those notes, you'll end up doing something on the wrong spot. And there's an awful lot of dovetails here to screw up. All right, I'm going to almost forgot to avoid painting myself into a corner. I'm trying to uh, drill and countersink in a really tight spot. Because remember, even though this is going together like this, we're going through this way. And I want to stay, I want to cut a lot of this away, so I want to stay up close. So I'm just going to put two screws. So we'll go half inch and a half inch. Half inch down from the bottom of the joint and a half inch in from the edge. Uh, when it comes to assembling, it's nice to be able to assemble and clean it up without inter having interference from another piece. And since this thing, these pieces are top side, bottom side, all over the place. So what I think I'll do is join this one first. That will allow me to clean up unobstructed. I'll be able to clean up this side where the pins are going to be sticking up and this side where the tails are going to be sticking up. Then I'll go over to this one. And remember now I've got this piece on here, so I have to think of how that's going to be restricting me at all. But I can go ahead and assemble this like so. I've got lots of room in here to plane away the ends of these pins. And I can easily turn that upside down or stand this up on its head, put it in the vise, and I can clean off the ends of these tails. The only one that's going to complicate is when we put this little piece on. We can clean up the top side no problem. And so if we can get in with a block plane, you're just going to have that in your way because you're going to be working on it in, like this. So this, this one will go first.
Looking to see if any others need to be closed. Okay, everything's together. I flushed it all up. Now, I'm just going to use my shooting board to make a correction right here. Just a little bit long. Whoops, can't do that. these will have to be done with a block plane all right I just want to clean this up but I've got to follow this so that means over to here and then keeping it down turn and then when you get there swivel and then when you get here swivel and hopefully you get a nice clean pass but I need to go a little bit deeper you can still see some torn well it's not torn but it's rough cut from the table saw Now, this is going to fit up in like that. So we don't need these big long tails. We just needed something that allowed us to screw up into the underside. So I'm going to suggest we cut off quite a bit. I think if we went an inch, it would be plenty. I'm just going to do this one by eye because yeah, right about there. Yeah, got nice and clean. We don't want any burns like that, so I'm just going to cut a, actually I could do the whole thing here. I was going to say I was going to cut it over there on the shooting board, but I can do it right here. I did that so that it won't tear off the back side. If you, do, if you leave a sharp edge like that, every time you're putting the shooting board in there, you're going to catch that and it's eventually going to mess it up. So you may as well cut a little chamfer off on it first. Got to do both sides. Don't need to do this one because it's up underneath. Yeah, I think I'll also just, yeah, I was gonna knock these corners off, but I don't think so. I just think I'll just cut a, a chamfer off of all the corners that are actually going to be visible. That's ready to put in place, but I'm gonna do one more thing just so that I get uh, not necessarily level, but I want it to be parallel to everything that's horizontal down there. So I'm going to take another piece of plywood and cut a spacer that is just under two and a half inches wide. Right. Okay, put the spacer over there. Now, I'm just going to use my thumb to feel where it's the same amount on both sides. That'll get it close, and I should be able to clamp just in the one spot.
So I haven't put the other screws in yet, and I'm just looking at it, and I'm thinking, you know, it would look a little more finished if we went in and beveled these two surfaces. What I mean is cut this back on an angle here and cut this back on an angle here. Now to get it on this side. Gotta knock that space out right of there. So now you're using your shooting board. Nice and convenient. Oh, perfect. Wish I had one of those on my own bench. Yeah, hope this helps you. See you. If you like my work and enjoy my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos and help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the link below, the chisel and plane icon, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our online and in-person workshops.